I decided not to leave my people. I guess that's kind of the event that started everything in motion. You see, these weren't my people at first when I was banished here. The Mage Council had just ruled against me, judging that I had veered too far into the dark arts. Guilty. 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 They stripped me of my once formidable powers and sent me here to die. This dimension, filled with monsters, giants, elements, every horror you can think of. And yet, I did not die. I found that my powers were stripped, but the ability to regain my power was not. It was there that my plan first formulated. I would regain all my power, and more. Build a portal so mighty that its power could take me back to my home dimension, where I would rain down fire and brimstone on their heads, and they would know my name once again. Well, today is the day. It is time. My students gathered to see me off. I think there were some who were sad to see me go. Some were worried about what would happen to them once their protector or their teacher had left them. I can't explain what happened exactly. I was looking at the portal, envisioning my revenge, my rage at the people who imprisoned me in this place, and I just couldn't find that fire. I couldn't find the anger or the lust for revenge against those who did me wrong. Instead, there was worry. I worried for my people, the ones who followed me, who left their village to come here and build a better society under my teachings. I only need one more step forward to leave this place, this place where monster attacks are the order of the day and where every single step forward is met with resistance and pain, and yet, I could not take that last step. I turned around and returned to my people. Maybe tomorrow, I thought, maybe tomorrow I'll seek my revenge, but today, after 100 days in this place, we have a lot of work to do. Two hundred days in hardcore Minecraft as a mage. After just a huge positive reception of part one, we're back in this world seeing what our hero can do with another hundred days. We'll be following the once dark magic wizard as he learns further what it means to embrace the people here and what the repercussions of that decision truly are. I'll be once again lightly roleplaying as I found it's a great way to tell a story as we work through this great mod pack called Simply Magic by Drastic Demise. It's a bit of Minecraft nostalgia for me. It's the first mod pack I ever played, and before we leave this version of Minecraft forever, it's going to be really fun to touch base on it just one more time. If you find you enjoy these story-driven videos, as well as more traditional Let's Play content from my epic RTX single-player world, why not subscribe so you don't miss the next part? I already have the script outlined, and it's ready to go. Alright then, enough about all that. Let's go see how our hero is doing. I have made a huge decision. In order to teach my students more properly, I need a textbook. A kind of guide. I can't continue to be the one and only teacher for these men and women forever, and when they branch out and begin teaching the arcane to their own students, they're going to need some sort of book to follow. I'll be working through the guidebook as best I can, trying to find issues that I need to refine or change or make better before I hand it off to my assistants, Bob primarily. Many of the first lessons, or quests I suppose, are things that I've already taught them. I knocked them off the list quickly. Things like an oculus, spell crafting table, crafting altar. It was when I went to knock out the quest to hold every Ars Magica item at once that I realized I was completely out of Desert Nova. Not a big deal. I know there's a desert close, and even though it was nighttime, I took to the sky in my air sled and headed out. While on my way to the desert, that's when I saw them. Yeah, those were mages from my realm. They're called the Black Flame, and they're kind of the secret police of the Mage Council. Why could they be here? I wondered if they were banished too, like me, maybe they had done the council wrong. But I watched them shoot fire from their hands at a zombie, and no, they weren't stripped of their power. These guys were ready to go. I took the chance to surprise them and shot from above, making short work. At this point, I can rather easily handle one or two Black Flame, but they usually come in numbers. Why would they be here on their own, unless they were looking for me? I worked on knocking out some simple quests from the book today. I think all my students could pass this so far quickly, except for maybe be able to bone meal grass. We don't actually have any real means to get bone meal, except risk life and limb fighting monsters at night. That's not great for novices. 
So I need to consider options soon. I have a few thoughts. I'll keep working and writing the book for now and see where it naturally leads. I had to run out of the village to find pigs to slaughter for more candles. I'm going to want to make a few more light obelisks soon, and it's going to be good to have some pig fat on hand. Ars Magica was the type of magic that I specialized in back at the academy. It's mostly an offensive and defensive action magic, but there are lots of different kinds of magic, and since I'm here by myself, I think maybe I'm going to take this opportunity to get into more of them. But let's do my school first. So it's only taken me three days to knock out most of the Ars Magica quests that I've written so far. There are a few that, that will require things I have in very low supply, such as my one Ender Pearl I'm unwilling to part with. That being said, I'm very happy with my progress through it so far. It only took me about three days. I expect it will take my students quite a bit longer. I'm going to get a good night's sleep tonight and then delve into probably the one magic I'm most excited to learn about. I've always admired it from afar, but I wasn't allowed to study at the Academy. Well... I guess I'm the headmaster now, and I'm changing the rules. I may already have my first issue with learning Thongcraft. I can't find any crystals. I probably need to venture far, far away from my base and find some unexplored land to seek them out. And I'll do that tomorrow, but not today. I set up my kale factors to auto smelt all the ores I bring back. Using the new flicker of focus of sorting, I can pull items out of one chest, insert them in my kale factor, and then export them from that into another chest. This is fantastic. I can feel my old knowledge of Ars Magica coming back faster than ever now that I'm actually writing it down in a book. I can't wait to get further. I returned from an all-day mining trip with tons of ores and stone, which is really good. I may need a lot of stuff to really take this to the next level, but still, another day, no Thaumcraft crystals. I think I just need to go further. Look, that's okay. I don't mind doing some mining. It's fast, and filling up my inventory is just minutes but I need some way to get the materials back to base so I can stay mining longer. Yeah, I've got to figure this out. All right, I'm starting to think this may be a real issue. I mined all day long and for the third consecutive day have found nothing. I think I just need to go far, far away, as in not walking distance to me. That brings up a good question though. What am I gonna do to get there and back? I need to sleep on this. This is a complex issue. I had a terribly close call. I traveled to the place where I had been killing the Frost Guardian and took my air sled just a bit south of the place I'd never been. I dug a hole deep down and started mining. I had just started, well, when this happened. Yeah, that was awfully close. I can usually kill these things by just backing up and shooting them, but I didn't have anywhere to back up, and this dude almost got me. Wow. I returned home by recall to unload my inventory. I managed to find a few shards on my way down, but not nearly enough. While I was there, I decided to upgrade the kill factor with three charge focus, which should actually make it quite a bit faster. That's cool. I don't know why I didn't really do that before, but regardless, it's chugging along now. With enough time left in the day, I decided to take one more trip back to the mining area and head back through the gateway. Now that's when tragedy struck. It was dark and I had had trouble finding my mining hole, so I decided to use my mage lights and light it up. But I accidentally cast recall. I fell from my sled. I didn't die, but the sled just vanished. I recalled myself to home, hoping maybe it had been sent there too, but no luck. That was my only air sled. This is a tragedy. Not having an air sled is actually worse than just slowly walking. My only gateway to the far reaches of this land is on top of a giant mountain. I have an idea though. I can make a spell that will allow me to jump off the top and gently float to the ground. I hope it will carry me far enough that I'll be in the new area, but even if not, I do have haste running. It's pretty solid. Should be able to get there fast enough until I can gather the ender pearls for another gateway. It works fine. It's not great. I underestimated the sheer distance, so there's still a good bit of running, but whatever. Uh, this should be fine for now. I mined most of the night and got some Feather Touch Thaumcraft shards. 
Can't wait to get into this, hopefully tomorrow. I spent the first half of the day scanning stuff with my new thalmometer. Pretty cool stuff here. As I look at stuff through the lens, I can see what it's made of, and later I'll be able to use this stuff to research even more stuff. Fantastic, really. After a good bit of scanning, I kind of hit a wall, so I made a research table and some scribing tools. With this, I can combine primary aspects to make lower tiered aspects. I made a few and then continued my scanning. Solid scanning day today. I remember so many times just watching the thaumaturges at school do their research. They would complain and complain, but it looks so interesting to me. I might be the only one, maybe the only one left in the entire history of Thaumcraft who really actually loves research. The only one. After a decent amount of research today, I went out to look for nodes. Since I've never had a thalmometer before, I've never actually seen a node, but my friends at the academy said they're all around us. I found a couple at night, and then this. Yeah, the council is definitely here. I guess they're not satisfied with the single black flame mages they've been sending. They sent a full group of armored mages flying their colors. This is really bad. I'm thinking about my students. I've been working on the book trying to teach them even the most basic of spells. If these guys find our village, they will kill everyone without hesitation. The council views me as tainted. They'll view any of my students as the same. I need to get home right away and make sure they're safe. With all the nodes I found in this world being very, very far and a real pain in the butt to get to, I want to heavily dive into research. My goal is to actually move the nodes back home as soon as I possibly can. It's funny, my entire outlook on this book has changed a bit since I saw those Mage Council warriors. I'm spending the nights with Bob training the other mages, but spending all of my days training myself. If I'm being realistic here, they're not going to be ready. Bob, maybe. He's been training with me the longest, but the others, they barely know the basics. If I'm going to be taking on the full force of the Mage Council, I'm going to need to be better than I ever imagined. I'll admit, when I think of them attacking my village, I do feel some pull of the dark. If I were to delve into blood magic just a bit, the magic that got me banned, I could probably... No, no. I can't go down that route. I can defend my people with Ars Magica. I know that from before, and the new Thaumcraft spells I'm learning now. I just need to work faster. There's a ticking deadline. I just don't know when it is. Well, children, uh, that's the way I remember it anyway. Oh, no. No, I don't regret it. We had so many things to build here, but maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll return home and give my captors a taste of my new abilities. But today, go practice your spells. We have a lot to do. I had that dream again. The one I'm sitting in the house many years after deciding to stay with my people. It fills me with hope and fear. I hope that maybe it's not a dream as much as a vision of the future, but also I fear that it won't take place. I fear I won't be able to grow the school and I won't be able to keep them safe. After 113 days in this prison dimension, everything changed. I found several small villages of people here, but today I traveled far south looking for nodes and I found a city. It wasn't pristine, yeah, that's true, but it was huge. There had to be 30 to 40 villagers here, so city, maybe not a city, but huge and defensible. There were stone walls all around it, only a few gates. I don't know why, I've been thinking about moving all the nodes back to me, but maybe I should move me and my students to the nodes. It's a huge decision, but I saw more Mage Council warriors wandering around, I assume looking for me. I need to go all in on defense. Tomorrow, I'll return home and break the news to my students. After sleeping here in my new city, I changed my mind. The people here are a bit standoffish. I did nearly kill 15 monsters outside their walls, so I think they feel I'm at least somewhat on their side. Thanks to Bob, I know some of their language. I did try to communicate that I'm here to help, but I was met with some skepticism. 
I was gonna go all the way home, but I thought better of it. If I'm for sure that I'm moving here, I should just move my gateway. I spent a good deal of time gathering a lot of stone and materials so that I could have some sort of storage place here inside the city walls. After setting up the gateway and activating it, it didn't work, not at all. Seems that the distance is a lot further and it's gonna require a lot more essence to actually charge. So I did what I didn't want to do. I ran the entire way home. No air sled, so I just ran. I just ran and ran. It's very far. It took the entire day. I'm such an idiot. After messing around with this gateway for an entire day trying to get it to charge, I realized that I put in the keystone receptacle facing down and not sideways. So, yeah. Yeah, as soon as I put it in the right way and charged it up just a little bit, it actually fired up. So it's going to work. It just needs to get enough power to actually send me that distance. Yeah. Yeah. It works. After it charged for a little while, I did some mining and the gateway connected. I made two trips back and forth bringing all my stuff. I have a plan to build here that will be perfect for both me and my students and also for the people of the city. I just need them to not come looking for me for a little while longer. I need to buy a little bit of time. I flattened a bunch of land near my storage building in the new city and started laying out my castle? Yeah, I think castle. It's going to be big and stone and full of defenses for when the council comes to visit. We'll have lots of room for all my students as well as any new recruits from this new city. We'll have plenty of training room as well. If there's one regret I have from the school in our old village is it wasn't big enough and wasn't really defensible at all. I didn't think we'd need to defend against other humans. Monsters, sure. Regular walls are fine for that, but humans have flame spells and maybe building out of wood wasn't so smart after all. I need to get back to the book soon. This has to take priority though. I have the first part of the castle laid out. I spent a large part of the day just putting in floors so I can start getting things in the right rooms. My main focus will be Thaumcraft and Ars Magica, obviously, but I want to have lots of room for my students to do their studies as well. There will definitely be a phase two of this build. After another two trips back and forth, I'm starting to get settled in. One of the new city villagers came up to talk today. He was very, very nervous. I think he was trying to tell me about something about a dark obelisk outside the walls and how the villagers are scared. He was asking me to take a look at it, I believe. I actually managed to get walls up today. I really wish I had an AOE non-feather touch dig spell. I'm actually running low on cobblestone. I'm just hurrying so much so I can get back to Thaumcraft and the book as soon as I possibly can. I made another light obelisk with the ritual of purification next to my new crafting altar. This place is just going to be so great. I spent the first 100 days I was in this prison dimension all cooped up in one small little house and now I actually have enough room to spread out and do my thing. Wonderful. I spent the evening working outside of the castle adding supports. If our outer city walls are breached, I want to have a good secondary set of strong walls to keep any monsters or mages out. My main focus right now has to be getting our students here to our new home. Right now, they are mostly defenseless, except for whatever small abilities Bob has to protect them. I checked on them today, and they're all okay, still studying hard, but I worry. Adding a second floor to this castle is absolutely clutch. My students are going to be housed up on the second or even maybe third floor to keep them as far away from any monsters that could wander in as I possibly can. I need to move quickly. I started planting lots of spruce trees around. They grow quickly and produce a lot of wood from their huge 2 by 2 meter trees. I need a new spell. Actually, I need two new spells. First, I want a quick way to gather obsidian. So I'm going to create a mining power spell. Projectile. Dig mining power. This should give me the ability to break obsidian instantly. I don't think there's any need to add AoE at this point. I just set up my mana battery and essence refiner to make an earth essence. Pretty easy stuff. I just did dirt, two stone, and obsidian with one arcane ash, and boom. I'm getting there. I gathered everything I need without having to return to our old home. That's pretty big progress. Things are starting to settle in here. I feel like maybe this is where I actually live. I made the spell and it didn't unlock prosperity. That's actually what I really wanted. Nothing. I made a mistake. After some research, I left out Feather Touch from my spell, so I actually need to make it again. A complete waste of time and resources. I had to spend the entire day gathering resources for this new spell. 
Can't believe it. I had to make a new Earth Essence, not a big deal, but I need an Air Essence, which I have plenty of from my many fights with the Air Guardian. Okay. Well, that's one good thing. I got it! With Prosperity, I can make an awesome dig spell that will double or even triple the ores that I get when I'm underground. Boom, baby. This is fantastic. Now, it is an expensive spell, but I think I have the materials to pull it off. The only thing I'm very short on is gunpowder for the TNT required, so I actually spent some time down in the caves hunting creepers. It's a little crazy down there. I need to spend some real effort to light these things up. Yeah, fun stuff, right? The nether is awesome. I need some air essences, so I returned to take on my old base and went up to the tower. After a few minutes of summoning the air guardian, I went from three essences to 11, but here's the big news. I got a new air sled. Flight is mine again. Today was a day of triumphs and failures. I made the three base essence cores required for my awesome fortune AOE dig spell then made the spell, and it is amazing. Where one coal used to give me one coal piece, now it can range between one and three. The same should apply to diamonds, blue topaz, and most importantly, the rarest of all ores, moonstone. Then in my joy at having made this very difficult spell, I took my first ride on my new air sled to survey the city. I noticed a small fire, and in the time it took me to get down there, several villagers had been set on fire by some sort of terrible flame demon. fire just kept on spawning more demons. It seemed like I had to put it out as fast as I could. I fought all of them off and we lost one house, but more importantly, we lost two villagers. I couldn't save them. My heal spell was only set to self. I don't have a projectile heal. In my arrogance, I didn't even consider it. The villagers won't even look at me. I don't know if they blame me. The thing is, I don't know if I blame me either. I spent the day trying to get my head right. I have amazing amounts of stone and cobblestone now just from mining, and so I began work on the second floor of the castle. There's so much to do. I want new spells I need to build so I can relocate my students, who I've been completely neglecting. I need to delve so, so much more into Thalmcraft. I've barely scratched the surface. I think, though, in the end, defenses against the monsters here, as well as roving bands of the council's mages, has to come first. The reality is we lost two people. I don't know that the people in the city were starting to trust me or not, but after losing two of theirs, I'm sure they don't. This world is hard, and it needs a hard person to protect them. I need to be stronger. This castle is going to be awesome, I hope. I was a master of the arcane in my previous life, not a master of building huge epic castles, but I think this is going to be good. The thing is, it's kind of a race against time more than anything else. If I had all the time I wanted to, to find different color combinations or other shapes, the thing is, I could be discovered at any point. This castle will be great, but more than anything, it will be safe. Probably. The third floor of the castle is done, and I need a break from building. I feel really good about where we're at, but I want to get back into Thalmcraft research and finally get some new powers. I left the city for two things today. I need sand to start growing a decent amount of sugarcane here, and I need wool. It's time to bring my students. I think they need to pick up the pace on their studies and I need to pay more close attention to them. Bob has been doing a great job this last month passing on the things I've taught him, but I think they need a real master teacher and I think Bob might need a break. They're here. I recall them all to the third floor where they'll be living and studying. During the day, they'll have full use of Ars Magica and later Thomcraft tools in the castle, but at night, I think they can reasonably be safe here up on the third floor. Bob is super happy about the giant stone walls. 
I've sent on one of Bob's best students, Earl, to work on, well, public relations with the villagers in this new city. I'm hopeful some might express a desire to learn the arcane of my school and eventually join our ranks. We can use all the firepower we can get. There are about 5,000 things I need to be doing, and yet, I spent the entire day putting iron bars on the castle for windows. Instead of glass in this terrible place, glass just doesn't seem like a viable option or a barrier of any kind to these horrible beasts that attack us both day and night. Iron bars seem to feel just about right. I sure hope my students appreciate the sunlight coming into their room. Also, I finished the tower part of the castle. It's coming along. It's a little bland, a little boring, but it's coming along. I made a new spell today. It's called Projectile Create Water. Look, I don't really need it, to be honest, but I want to move some farms around, and it would be great to have water on command, and after all, I'm a mage. Doesn't look right to have a mage, powerful, master of the arcane, carrying buckets around. Also, I am still thinking about defense, and I don't want monsters trampling our crops. I need to put up some sort of wall or something around the fragile farmland that we have so far. My goodness, finding nodes is tedious business. I need a better system. I want to make a good great wood wand next. It can hold double the V. Is it V? Viz? Vice? Let's call it V. But that also means it will require double the nodes to charge it up. I searched most of the day and night and found exactly one node. Cool. I need to learn how to bring nodes home. This is insane. Everything is so slow with them all over the place. In my research today, I learned how to make a node in a jar. That's going to be great, but there's a problem because of course there's a problem. I need 70 V per aspect just to do it once. My max wand only holds 50. I made three pieces of thaumaturge robe today. They do grant a discount and I'm hoping that I can use that discount to maybe get a little bit more done. I was out in the desert harvesting sand and I got caught in quicksand of all things. Okay, universe, I get it. I get it. Time to go home. I worked more on wands today and made some goggles of revealing. These are going to be great for finding nodes more easily while out in the wild. My main focus here needs to be a silverwood wand. To do that, I need two major thaumic machines. One is a crafting altar to actually make the silverwood wand core, and the other is a basic alchemy setup. I'm not sure which I'm most nervous about, but it's fair to say both. I searched so long and hard for a single Ordo node and came up short. Nothing. I really can't do anything with that one, so I'm going to have to look again tomorrow. Without an Ordo node, I'm stuck. I was out exploring again, and I ran across something odd. The ground was all purple, and oh my goodness, you know what? This is taint. I remember hearing fellow students at the academy talk about it and their fears. Taint can come from Thaumcraft, and it's a constant struggle to outrace becoming more powerful in Thaumic Arcane versus becoming tainted. How did I completely forget about taint? This could be bad. After searching for an entire day, at the very end, I found one single 25 Ordo node and tapped it. It's in a winter biome, and it's very far away. That'll be the first node I bring home once I get my Silverwood wand made. At least I don't have to walk home. That would be the worst. All right, then. It's time to start crafting. I made a crucible and surrounded it with stone. I did it for my entire floor to catch fire while I'm making my first real Thaumcraft craft. I put a heat source under it and threw in some great wood logs, then some iron nuggets, and boom, we have Thaumium. This is going to cap my new wand. I almost made a terrible mistake. I was just about to start crafting the Silverwood Wand because the wand I really want still wasn't unlocked in my research. And then I checked one last time, and there it was. The Witchwood Wand. Somehow I unlocked it during all my research and searching for nodes. This is going to be a life changer. This wand is amazing. Since I'm already decently skilled at Ars Magica, I can actually use my mana to recharge my wand. I won't ever need to go node hunting again. The only thing it takes to craft is all the elemental essences and some essentia. That's fantastic. I actually gathered most of that stuff for the Silverwood Wand. Today's the day that everything turns around. I got a good start on alchemy today. I set up some essentia collecting jars and began collecting the items I'm going to need to craft this beastly wand. It's a little more complex than maybe I was prepared for at first, but I think I'm starting to get a handle on it. Mostly, I just want to craft this wand before I have to go out and look for more nodes. Honestly, not searching for nodes is turning into my entire life goal. More alchemy today. 
I'm getting there. It's kind of painful at first, but I know I'll be able to heavily automate this in the near future. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I think it should be ready by maybe tomorrow. I cannot believe what a feeling this is. I've watched thaumaturges at the Academy do this countless times, but to actually do it myself, and not only that, but to be getting an item that I desperately need. Oh, this is amazing. What a machine. I got my wand core and I was so happy I took a running leap through the village and that's when I was attacked by some sort of flaming demon beast. There were a few of them, but that's not the biggest problem. There were no villagers standing around. I had a sinking feeling in my gut. Not again. In the village, there was fire damage everywhere. They had been attacked. I've been so busy crafting and growing my thalmic power, something came at them and I wasn't there. I looked around decent part of the city had been burned. When I asked what happened, they described to the best of their ability what had to be a mage. Maybe the council had found me. Our time may be out. I decided right then and there, I'm not going to wait for them to come to me. It's time to take charge. I talked to Bob and we decided to bring them all in for their own safety. I recalled all of the villagers to my third floor at once. I'll work on expanding their space later. Some of them were not pleased at my decision, but few were down to half a heart. It had to be done. Yesterday was quite a blow. To go from such a high to such a low and having moved the students in, I feel at least we've settled on a path. I stayed up much of the night talking to them and explaining. Bob is my translator because my villager speak is still not great. We explained that if they stay out there, they will eventually be attacked. They know about the monsters in this place and have been dealing with them for generations, but they don't know about other mages. I explained they're much worse than the fiercest of monsters here, but I don't know if they believe me. It wasn't until Bob explained that as great and powerful as I am, the power they've seen me display in defense of the city, as great as that is, I was still banished here and stripped of my abilities. I believe the people who sent me here are coming here to finish me and any who follow me. At first they wanted me to leave. I struggled to explain. If I go, that won't matter at all. The council will come back here and burn this place to the ground. They'll view people here as infected with my teachings. I don't know if they understood, but I hope so. Regardless if they follow me or not, I put the city in danger by coming here and I will defend it to the end. Yesterday, I was just about to craft my Witchwood Wand, and I discovered that it takes a whole lot of V to actually make the wand with the caps. So I had to make a crafting scepter. If this works right, and I think it will, I should be able to skip the Silverwood Wand altogether. That would be great. I made a Great Wood Wand with three gold caps that can actually hold 75 V. That's the cost to make my Ars Magica Wand, so with my 10% discount for my robes, I should be on easy street. I filled it all up except for Terra, so I'll have to head out and get that in the morning. Solid day today. Do you think us so foolish? Why? Why are you here? You banished me. Leave me be. We took your power, and yet you could not leave well enough alone. We watched you regain some of your abilities and allowed it. But now you have taken apprentices? You? The one who has been banished for his crimes? This is forbidden, as you well know. No, no, this is not right. These people would be destroyed. They can't defend themselves. These people? Who do you think these people are? I... I... I don't... They, they are, are but descendants of banished mages from ages ago. They, they cannot, cannot be allowed to learn the arcane. 
the dark abilities flow through their blood just as it did their ancestors. Just as it does you. No, no, they aren't dark. I've renounced blood magic. I won't teach them any. It is too late. You have broken the agreement. I, I made no agreement. I made no agreement. It was made for you when we stripped you of your abilities. Enough. You and the bloodline of the banished will be destroyed. Sentence will be carried out in 50 days. I made my Witchwood one today. I had a dream, but I don't think it was a dream last night. I, I think it was a real message from the council, and I think we have about 50 days left. I don't know what I'm going to tell the people. I slept on it, and I feel a little bit better here the next day. I have about 50 days, 49 days, to prepare my army, I guess. That's what it's going to have to be. They have to be drafted. This is all my fault. If I never came here, maybe this city at least would be safe from the council. Maybe only me and my few students would face their rage, but now it's too late. They're coming. We have to be ready. I made some paving stones of warding for inside my castle, just to section off hallways and different rooms. I am kind of sick and tired of being attacked while I'm crafting, and these things will keep pretty much any monster out, I think. I think even the flying ones should work against them. I am just about out of Ordo shards, so I need to mine. I believe they form mostly on ice or frost biomes, so I flew my air slide out to the one I discovered while node searching and mined all night long. I left thousands, maybe millions of cobblestone just laying on the ground, but I'm really only after one thing. I'll take the diamonds as well, I suppose. I broke away from Thomcraft for a little while today just to work on the city. I want to tidy up the roads, make sure there aren't any jumps. I'd like there to be at least stairs or slopes going up all the roads and everything. I want to make sure that after we defeat the council mages, that's right, after, I don't plan on dying in this upcoming attack. After we defeat them, I want to make sure that we have a city that is worth living in. I didn't do a lot today. I think I'm just, I don't know. I'm a mix. I'm worried about the council. I'm worried my students aren't learning fast enough. I'm run down on fighting monsters every single minute of every single day. I need real progress here. I, I don't know. I'm just discouraged. I decided part of the reason why I'm down about this whole thing is because of the overwhelming size of some of the projects I want to do. In addition to the council sending their forces against me in only a few weeks. Today I did a small thing, but that one thing will help a lot. I built an infernal furnace. This thing is super cool. It will smelt items for free. Additionally, occasionally giving extra nuggets. It's not exactly doubling my ores, which is possible in Thomcraft, but I'm not quite there yet. I have a lot of ores and more, more than I'll ever need, to be honest. Mining is insanely fast. Even if I run out, I can mine up as much iron as I possibly need in about one minute. I attached a couple bellows to make it a bit faster, plus they look super cool. Nice. I added a hopper, item grate, and chest on top of the furnace just to drop all my iron and gold in after a mining session. This should be super easy. In fact, I could actually even make it easier. I have some thoughts, but that'll come later. After that, it was a big research day. I'm trying to find my way to better armor. I love my Ars Magica mage armor, but for a real battle, I might need something more... Hmm, stronger? And I believe there is such armor in Thomcraft. I just need to find a way to get to it in research. I've mostly abandoned my book for my students. I want to come back to it, honestly. It's just taken a backseat to the impending attack. After we beat the council's attack, I'll dig back into the book in earnest. I really do want to get into alchemy a lot more, so I set up four alchemical furnaces today, along with two Olympics each up in the second floor. Uh, I think this is going to be an easy solution to my Essentia crafting. Eventually, I will probably need to build some sort of building just to house all of it. But for right now, I think these four should help speed me along my way. The thing I have to figure out is how to get coal or another heat source up through the bottom of the furnace. It's not like hoppers go up. I have one thought. I had two large breakthroughs today. First, my old skills in Ars Magica came to the rescue. I can use Flicker Item Transport to get coal up through the bottom of the furnaces. Boom. Easy. Coal isn't my forever solution, but for right now, it's automated and it works. 
Secondly, for quality of life as much as Thomcraft research, I just learned now, after 58 days of this, I can scan items while in my inventory. Hi, yi yi. What a complete lifesaver. I really, really wish I had known this a long time ago, but I just got a ton of research points today by scanning literally every item I own in all of my chests. I want to fly. I mean, the air sled is awesome, but if I'm in serious combat for a long while, I need real flight. And the only way to get that is with a wither star. That's a tall order, but it's time. So with that in mind, I crafted a new attack spell. Lightning with three prosperity enhancements. This is like looting three for a spell and should help me get some wither skulls soon-ish, I hope. Oh, yes. I spent the entire day in the nether with my prosperity spell looking for just a single wither skeleton skull. With just one, I can actually make something that's going to make them drop a lot more commonly, but I need one first. Yeah. No luck. No luck, but uh, a, a really stress-free day living here in the nether. Really, really relaxing. It's like a spa. Day two in the nether. Nothing. It's kind of amazing, though, actually. No near-death experiences. Just grind. No luck again. I'm going to return home and figure something else out because this isn't working, but I want flight. I made two discoveries today back home doing some research. First, the dismembering spell that I was planning on using from Mars Magica actually requires three Wither Skeleton Skulls just to make the spell in order to get more. But Thomcraft has a better solution. There is something called a Axe of the Skull Taker. And with that, I can get somewhere around a 15% chance of actually getting a Wither Skull whenever I kill one. That's not bad, but the biggest thing is this axe only requires one Wither Skull to make. So that's what I want to do. I finished up the research, but yeah, I got to head back to the nether. I got it. Holy cow. What a grind just for one skull, but I got it. With this, the possibilities are endless. This Axe of the Skull Taker is a rather complicated infusing recipe, so I spent the entire day basically just breaking things down into their liquid essentia form, and yeah, I'm pretty close. It requires four different essentias. Three uh, aren't a big deal. Uh, I'm actually in need void jars just to get rid of the excess, but one is a little bit more complicated, but that's okay. TNT, again, is my holdup. Luckily, I actually got a good bit of TNT in the nether just from killing those floating flaming skull things that constantly attack you. Yeah, so uh, cool. I'm glad those are around. I did it. I got it. It took some era in Furnace and Tellum, but I got it. Oh, heads are going to roll. Okay, this axe is awesome. It only took about 20 kills or so, and I got all three skulls. Hooray. I celebrated quietly and quickly zipped right back to the portal. I'm not messing around the nether any more than I need to. I'm more than just a little bit nervous about fighting the wither, so I did some more Thomcraft research. There is such thing as warded glass that I believe, and I'm not 100% on this, I believe it will trap the weather inside. I think it's worth it to give that a go. So I spent today making as much as I could until I ran out of zombie brains. Yeah, you need zombie brains to create glass. That makes sense. So at nighttime, I went out and hunted as many zombies as I could. I finished the night with nine brains. I don't think that's quite enough for the amount of water glass that I'm going to need, so I spent the day harvesting sand, smelting a ton of glass, and just kind of waited for night so I could do it again. I'll admit, spending the night killing zombies is kind of... fun, but I have to watch myself. I don't want to slip back into the dark arts. Killing beasts and monsters is a necessity of life here, but if it becomes fun... Yeah, I can almost feel my bloodlust returning, and I won't. I... I can't go there ever again. I did it! Okay, look, 
this might not be my most proud moment of my mage life, but in the end, I beat him, and really, truly, that's all that really counts. Maybe when I retell this story to my grandchildren, I will leave out the weatherproof cage. But hey, you know what? I got a nether star, and that means I can craft flight. I'll be honest, I want to make my flight spell right now, but if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right. So that means I want to do a duration three modifier on it. And that means I need three more red skill points. And that means I need to go find the winter guardian place. So first I'm going to stop by our old village and get some pumpkins so I can summon him. Yeah, I seem to have lost my winter guardian summoning platform. This dude can only be summoned in a area with snow. So like extreme hills or a high mountain or something like that. And uh, yeah, I, I can't find it. I guess I could make a new one, but I, I know it's around here somewhere, and I have spent the entire day looking for it. If you remember, I moved my gateway, and so now I don't have an easy way to get there. So, yeah, I, I thought I could just track it down, but I can't, apparently. It took me almost the entire second day to find my summoning platform. I finally did it, and I summoned and killed him three more times. Not too hard. This fire spell is great. This may be the biggest day since my trial. I got it. I got flight. I'm so glad I took the extra time to get the duration three. This spell will last for nearly seven minutes before I need to recast it. That is just awesome. There is a spell I'm definitely going to need if I'm going against other mages. Dispel is a requirement in a good magic fight. Anything that casts me, I can simply dispel. The downside is it will dispel my flight or regen spells as well, but whatever. I can simply recast that. I start my day by talking to Bob. Well, trying to. He was a little distant. I showed him my flight spell and promised I'd teach it to him as soon as he was ready. I asked him to take on even more of the teaching. Well, most of the teaching, in fact. We only have 25 days until the council attacks, and I need to spend all of my time preparing. I spent the rest of the day working on the roads in town. I want everything to be lined up so we can navigate through the town quickly, depending on whether we're attacking or defending or running or whatever. I want to be ready. You know what I'm sick and tired of is walking out my front door and having a creeper fall down on my head because it's up on one of the roofs of these houses. So yeah, these houses got to go. I, I want clear sight lines whenever I leave my place to know if someone's out there, if someone's attacking or whatever. I want to have a nice empty field right next to my front door. Okay, cool. So these houses got to go. I need amber. I need a lot of amber, actually. I mined all day long and all night long, and I got a ton of material. Like, I, I can't even believe how much materials, but only about 25 amber, and that's with my Prosperity 3 spell. It's enough for a few of what I'm after next, but I'm probably going to have to mine again. This is going to up the safety of our little civilization here about a billion percent. In my Thumbcraft research, I learned about some sort of lantern made with amber. That's why I wanted it all. This lantern lights up a huge area. So my thinking is I'll make a bunch of these lanterns, put them all over the town, not just in my castle, but I'm talking every bit of this entire city. Should keep all the monsters. And if the mages do come, I should be able to actually see them if they attack at night. This is going to be a big net win. And who knows, <laughs> I might be able to let my students leave our, our little uh, castle area here. I spent the whole day making more night ore, at least for as much Essentia as I had on hand. And then I spent the whole night down in the mines, mining up more amber. I really want to light up my entire city. It would be so nice to not have to worry about the constant monsters just dropping off roofs, coming around the corner in every pit and every hole in every dark house. Yeah, it'd be really, really nice. It was research day today. With the council arriving in only 19 more days, I have to pour my time into protection. I think my Ars Magica offensive spells are probably good, so I'm more concerned with, well, being alive. So I'm hoping Thomcraft has some answers. I researched a lot of stuff about runic shielding. From what I understand, well, it's a shield that takes the brunt of the attack before you actually take any damage. That sounds pretty good to me. But first, I need to automate a few things. Yeah, I'm going to need more space. The more I read about this and the more I think about how exactly I want to set up everything, the more I realize that as big as my castle is, 
Well, it's not big enough. So, I have a whole second floor. The problem is the footprint is a little oddly shaped, and I want something that's kind of square, to be honest. Kind of boring, but big enough to put all my Essentia right out, right next to each other, and allow a golem to actually operate. I leveled the houses outside and flattened the land, and I should be good to expand tomorrow morning. Now that I got my new altar area set up, I realize now really how cramped I really was. This is much, much better. I'm going to be able to surround this altar with Essentia jars and really just have one step crafting. Dump my materials to be broken down into one chest and wait a few moments and then craft whatever I need to on the altar. Very cool. I'm still gathering materials for these golems. My plan is to have two of them running at all times to help speed production. I figure it's faster to make two now than one now and add later one more. Eventually, I do want to have this all fully automated, but for right now, I have more pressing matters to attend to. After a rather chaotic craft, I got it. Oh, jeez. I didn't double check all my essences and I was one short. I managed to get it quickly enough that it didn't completely ruin my entire thing or explode or anything. And uh, yeah, wow, that was that was really close. I, I've got to double check stuff. Oh, yes, the golems are working perfectly. This is just so great. Every time I need Essentia, I can just drop it in and almost instantly craft whatever I want. Hooray, indeed. It was a building day today. I am uh, planning on building a building around my golems instead of putting the golems in a building, I guess. No matter what happens in about 12 days, I want to protect these things and, and my entire Essentia production. They're, they're a plan to automate the future of my life here, and I'm assuming that I'm going to have a future of life here. I'm not planning on dying, so with that in mind, I really want to make sure that everything is safe from the upcoming attack. I spent the day adding a better roof onto the new compound extension, as well as adding supports to the walls. I also want to level out some more of the ground for some upcoming farms here. I don't know if we're going to get to this before the attack uh, comes, but let's have it ready so whenever I do have a free day, I can actually add some golems now that my production is fairly streamlined. Today was another material gathering day. I decided with only 10 days left, I really want all four pieces of runic shielding. I really don't know how big of a fight I'm in for here. Of course, I don't expect the council to come themselves, but will they send a detachment? Will they send a full army? Will they send monsters? Who knows? They are capable of a lot of terrible things. I'm not as worried about my offense as I am my defense at the moment, so I really do think having all four pieces of my shield will be invaluable. I got my first ring. It's a pretty messy craft. I really have got to figure out how to cut down on all the warp generating on these crafts. I don't think these are even extremely high, unstable, unstable rather crafts. I, I don't know. Um, maybe I could add some crystals or skulls or something around here that would help. I made a bunch of crystals and added them overhead of the altar, and I think it had the right effect because I made the runic shield necklace with no warp effects at all. So that was super nice. One more day of this and I should have the belt done and my full four-piece runic shield. Sweet. Boom, baby. All four pieces of runic shielding are done. With a week to spare, I'm in good shape. Tonight I'm going to go check in with my students and my friend Bob. It's been a long time. Weeks, actually, since we've talked and I want to see how things are going. I visited with my students for a good while last night and it was, I don't know, different. They call Bob Master now, as they should. He is the one teaching them, but last night, I don't know, I, I'm i probably hearing things, but I felt it was a different tone when they called me Master. Maybe, uh, I, I'm probably, they're probably just worried, you know? They're probably just worried like I am. The council is coming, there is an impending attack. Eh, I'm sure it's nothing. Bob did tell me they've been making good progress and should be able to help me fight, which honestly is more than I expected. That's good. That's really good.
I made two straw golems, say, and two harvest cores. I think if I can upgrade these guys, they will plant and harvest all the crops near wherever I put them down. I think that with this upgrade, they'll actually replant as well, but I'm not actually 100% sure on that. Golems in, crops planted, and upgrades installed. With this entropy shard upgrade, I, I do believe this is what I need to make them replant, but I'm going to have to wait until the crops actually grow to see if they get harvested. We'll see if that happens over the next four days. I put magic brooms over each farm, and that should sweep up all of the crops. These guys, they don't put stuff back in inventories. They just sort of throw them on the ground, and that's okay. I got Ars Magica solution for that. I worked on a proper healing spell. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this in time. I need eggs for it. Nine, actually. So I spent the whole day gathering chickens to recall back to my base. I got some. Some suffocated in the wall whenever I recalled them a little too close. Uh, but I got a couple eggs so far. I, I don't know if I'm going to get nine. These guys need to hurry up and lay some eggs. Still waiting on eggs, so I worked on the farms and leveling the land a bit more. It would suck to be in the fight of my life only to fall in a hole or something. Tomorrow is my last day before the fight, and I want to spend it with my students and my good friend Bob. Just before dinner time, where I, we're all going to eat together as a family, I made my healing spell. The chickens laid their last egg, and it is really awesome. I made one other little surprise, just in case things go south. I feel really good about my chance against the Black Flame, or whoever the council sends against me. I gave my students very clear instructions on what to do, and then I spent the rest of the night in quiet preparation. They're coming for me, and my family, tomorrow. It wasn't long before I heard them. My students are all upstairs. Any noise coming from outside, well... I knew it was them. I battled the council's mages throughout the day, but when night fell, they sent something different at me. They sent these zombies in such mass that I almost ran out of mana a few different times. These zombies were tough. And not only were they tough, but they grew bigger the more I hit them. Yeah, I handled them, but there were a couple scary moments. I don't know how the council did it, but somehow they got the Ender Guardian to join them. It was there, in my city. I tried to take a stab at it, but I think I knew all along I didn't really have a chance. It was time for me to go. I recalled to my workshop and went upstairs to my newly constructed gateway. This was my emergency backup plan. I told my students if things went sideways, if they did call a boss or a mega monster, they should just go through the gateway to the old town and we would regroup there. Hopefully council wouldn't expect it, but that's when things went sideways. Our gateway was completely drained of power. I checked and double checked this thing before going to sleep last night and I know that there was lots of power. I don't know how this happened, so I had to make a run for it. I ran out of the somewhat safety of my castle only to see dawn had broken. I've been fighting for a day and a night. I ran to the church and activated the gateway. Somehow I made it before the Ender Guardian caught up to me. I activated the gateway and dove through. I came out of the gateway, not in my old village, surrounded by my students and my friend, but in a cell. Uh, there's no other answer I could see. They had captured me. Again. It was Bob, my oldest friend. I asked him how he did it, though it was easy enough to figure out. If anyone had my gateway key, they could have repositioned it to spit me out anywhere in the entire universe. I didn't think that I needed to hide it from my students. 
But why? We had a plan. He explained how I had abandoned them, abandoned him. How I had just left him to do the teaching while I trained on my own. He and the students were in so much fear of the council, and they didn't trust me to protect them. As it turned out, maybe he was right. Maybe they all were. I tried explaining, but it was done. Bob had cut a deal. He apologized to me for what it was worth, and he portaled it away. I was alone, banished again. Though, perhaps my turn away from the dark arts was not total and complete. Perhaps my rage at the council, my rage at Bob, perhaps I could find that spark again if I just reached deep enough. That dark spark. <laughs> oh yes, yes, there it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. What a journey. To be totally upfront, there are a couple bugs in the mod pack. If you're playing in your own world, you should know. The Winter Guardian can't spawn and causes a client crash on summon, so I threw away the materials it took to summon him and just gave myself an egg. Also, the Golemancer's Bell is bugged and requires a cheat to get it in-game. That's a pretty known bug, and I couldn't get around it. Outside that, it was super fun to play through and had a real blast from the past. You know, this is my first mod pack ever on my channel, and really the reason why I started YouTube. The final fight at the end here was done using a backup copy and commands to spawn all the enemies. Other than those three instances, all else was 100% survival. Patrons and YouTube members can get world download of day 99. If you want to help support the channel, the links are down below. Well, what's next for a mage? If you want to see part three, leave a comment below, and heck, why not subscribe so you don't miss it when it eventually comes out. I do plan on updating to a modern version of Minecraft for part three, so maybe you can give me some suggestions in the comments as well. I want to say a special thanks to Luke the Notable for coming up with this great concept, Forge Labs for turning me on to Mod of 100 Days, and a very special shout out to one of my best friends in the entire world of Minecraft. You like building? You like amazing builds? Well, listen, then you probably would like my good friend, Callus. Check this out, and look at this, and also this. Dude is seriously a master. He voiced my dad in 100 Days in a Fallout Bunker and is truly one of the best builders, if not the singular best builder I have ever seen in this game. Go subscribe to my bud Callus. The link is down below. You won't regret it. C-A-L-U-S-S. -S. Very special thanks to my patrons and YouTube members. All supporters at any level get world downloads of every 100 days world. I appreciate the support so much. I can't even say thank you for helping me and my family through this uh, difficult time for the last year and a half or two years here. All right. Well, look, enough of that for today. Thank you all for watching. Next up is going to be 200 days in a follow bunker continuing that series and I am uh, working on the script already, and I just can't wait to show you what's going on over there. So again, subscribe so you make sure you know when that video comes out. Okay? I love you all, and thank you so much for the support recently on the channel, and we'll see you next time.